Tick tack tack tack. Got a lot of static now. Well, that's up right now. millennium, humanity has lived among the stars, in darkness. Humans reached the stars long ago, building a republic of high technology and universal emancipation. Then they fought over it, squandered it, and finally lost it. Now a new dark age has descended upon humanity, for the greatest of civilizations has fallen, leaving ignorance and fear scattered among the ruins of many even the stars are dying. Then from the ashes of our ruin, Vladimir halted our decline. Proclaimed emperor by popular decree, he united the known worlds of human space under his cunning and charismatic rule. Vladimir created the Great Charter declaring how the powers of rulership would be divided and how his successors would be elected. Five scepters for Mother Church, protector of our souls. Five for the Merchant League, heralds of our past. And five for the noble houses, holders of our future. But each of these powers wished to rule it in their own way and schemed to gain complete power any price. Vladimir's military might convinced the noble houses to concede his rule, for they could not stand in battle before this master tactician. The Merchant League, last remnants of the Second Republic, made little pretense of their disdain for the charter of Vladimir, but they accepted his rule nonetheless. Fearful of his popularity among the people. The Patriarch of the Universal Church accepted Vladimir's rule on the condition that the Church present him the crown, thus ensuring their ritual role in approving all his successors. Vladimir's coronation as the first emperor of the known worlds took place on Byzantium Secundus, which had been declared the imperial throne world. In the year 4550 AD, Vladimir crowned himself with his own hands and died. An agonizing death at the hand of unknown powers. With Vladimir's death, his great union fell apart. Noble house turned on noble house igniting a war for the spoils of Vladimir's empire. The Commonwealth of Humanity was shattered, overcome by iron-fisted feudal lords. As the suns fade, so dies humanity's hope.
And I guess that's the end. No, wait. We've got Echo. I love audio issues straight off in stream. Hey, everybody. Uh, I am Andrew Greenberg, one of the co-creators of the Fading Suns line, here with the prophet Zebulon himself. Oh, uh, sorry. That's Bill Bridges, now line developer oh. and co-creator of the Fading Suns. Hey, Bill. We're already getting people hey. saying hey, Bill. Uh, hey, hey, hey. You will notice me occasionally looking to my left. That's because one of my three monitors isn't working, so I'm monitoring the uh, s the uh, stream over on my left uh, monitor. The two in front of me are actually running the whole shebang. And, uh, of course, it is Bill, who is the centerpiece of the whole thing. Yeah, I know, the static, we had this suddenly happen. Right as we started to get happen, we had every audio issue kick in. I have been trying microphone after microphone and headset after headset and it is not good um i might try pulling some things around the issue apparently is discord and i hate to say that because we're really looking forward to using discord for this but this was an issue we did not have yesterday with it which is uh pretty unfortunate let me uh try one more thing oh you love debugging the audio issues on the fly. Let me uh, try one thing very quickly and see All if right. that makes a different a difference. Can you all hear me at all? Wow, that's I really can cool. hear you. I don't know about the rest of them. Is the static better? Or about exactly the static is yes. <laughs> Okay, so we've got one more, and now I'm at a low file. Sounds change, like a beach. When I change my well, there's an easy way to give me more volume. We do that, and suddenly I've got a lot more volume. You do. We have all the static, so it sounds like a beach. We've got waves crashing at the side. Yeah, yeah you hear a loud mouth now. But you did not have the static during the audio. I know we didn't, because I was listening to it as well. So, pretty clearly. Okay. Yeah, it's your mic, I guess. It is my mic. Since we didn't have it during the audio. Yep, yep, yep. All right, well, I'll shut up and let Bill speak. Bill, tell us <laughs> about Fading Suns in 4th edition. <laughs> This is weird because uh, there's a lag on the Twitch, so I'm looking at myself a few seconds later. I'll have to look on the Discord. Uh, yeah, Fading Suns, uh, new edition. If anybody's tuning in here and hasn't gone over to the Kickstarter page yet, do it now. Pledge. Got some great stuff. Full color edition. First time in years we've had a, a new Fading Suns. And uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff. Gosh, what else am I going to say? Well, tell us about the cool stuff, Phil, because we've already into stretch goals. And uh, the whole idea uh, behind the stretch goals is Bill's already done most of the work for the basic things, but you need to make him work extra hard for the stretch goals. <laughs> well, me and all the other guys at Ulysses have to pull this stuff together. Those poor fools. Keep going. Make them work. Hit the whip. So what are some of the Yeah, there's goals? a lot of cool stuff. Uh, so far we have... Well, I'm looking at it right now. I love how this thing moves every time you... You go back to the page. 200 and 222 backers. We're getting close up to the uh, 40k euro stretch goal that will uh, give us the 3D varnish upgrade, which is really cool looking. That's going to be nice. We already got one of the deluxe play mats. We got some state cards. Those are the physical states. Those are things such as when. Uh, someone dazes you or stuns you or knocks you unconscious you can put those cards on your character sheet so you remember that hey you're unconscious uh all sorts of cool stuff and upcoming we've got oh we got to get the character sheets we've got to hit that goal everybody loves character sheets and yeah more stuff coming what you're gonna knock out the secret hidden stretch goal straight i tried to change another microphone static's even worse Oh boy. Oh well. Hey Brian. 
Chainsaw Gothics here. Yay. Awesome. Everybody out there, that one of the Fading Suns authors. Brian Campbell. I'm doing fine. So it's Brian writing. Brian is writing all sorts of stuff. He's also done a lot of editing. Just gave him a new assignment today, but we're going to keep that secret for now. Excellent, excellent. So talk about some of the differences between 4th edition and the previous editions. Uh, well, we've got the victory point system. We've got an upgrade on how that runs. In the previous edition, uh, anybody who's listening might remember that. Uh, you took a characteristic and you added your skill to it and you rolled that number or less on a d20. You wanted to roll as high as you could without rolling over because that gave you victory points. And then you had a little chart that would tell you how many extra damage dice victory points gave you. And then like the first edition, I think we divided by three. Then in uh, the uh, fast, the red brick edition or fast edition, it was by two. Well, the new edition, you just take straight the number rolled and you get those in tokens. And then you can spend them for all sorts of things. So you can spend them for extra damage. You can spend them to overcome uh, the defenses of the person you're trying to hit or affect. Uh, you can spend them to add bonus uh, numbers on your next roll. All sorts of different things. So basically, you've got a lot more agency this time around about doing all sorts of things. You could even save them for your own defense if someone hits you between now and your next turn. And uh, yeah, so what you're going to roll, you're going to want to spend them, but you can also bank them because the thing is they go away at the end of the turn, or actually at the start of your next turn, um, except for what you put in your little bank. And as your character gets better and better, his bank will grow, so he'll be able to have, keep more victory points in there. So uh, one of the big differences between uh, newbie characters and more experienced characters is the number of victory points they can keep on them. And that's going to matter a lot for things like defense and damage and stuff like that. So yeah, that's just one of the uh, different ways it runs. Um, benefices, you might remember from the earlier editions, those are now perks. They're kind of more supercharged now, so they do more than just one thing. So for instance, uh, your ranks, like if you're a noble knight or a, a priest deacon, that gives you not only your rank, but in the new system, it gives you some mental defenses against people trying to influence you. Because we don't just have physical combat anymore. We've got social combat or influence. And so someone can try to daunt you, which is to make you afraid of them. They can castigate you to make you feel guilty and confess. All that kind of stuff. And uh, against physical attacks, you'll use armor. But against those kind of influence attacks, you'll use your rank because who you are in society and who you are in these hierarchies the pan creator has ordained is very important. Excellent. I also hear a rumor that the that time has continued to advance as time has a want to do. Oh yeah, yeah. We are we, just like in the old game. We pretty much just add three thousand years to where we're at now. And we are in the period called the Pax Alexius, or the Peace of Alexius. And uh, elect Emperor Alexius has consolidated his gains on the throne. He's gotten a little more power. And he has uh, expanded his empire. He's finally uh, taken a wife, and she turned out to be a uh, Voldrock Barbarian shield maid. What? Yep, from the planet Hargard. What does Salandra uh, have to say about that? <laughs> oh boy, she's not happy at all. But uh, she pretends to be. And didn't Theophana kill a few of those barbarians back in the day? Oh, uh, she did, but uh, unfortunately, Theophana is gone. What? She disappeared on the Stigmata battlefields a while back. Isn't Everybody that where she has and mourned Solandra her. Had their final duel? <laughs> those might be the rumors. But uh, now, you know, some people are petitioning for sainthood for her. But uh, it'll probably be a few years before any of that happens. And how does poor Penelope Hawkwood feel about all this? <laughs> oh, she, she'll move on. She's fine. <laughs> Her son will be fine. <laughs> uh, she's got a uh, granddaughter now, too. That's the big thing. All right. So a Voldrock shield maiden. Boy, can, that, uh, can uh, people from the known worlds and barbarians actually... Uh, breed together? Isn't that a genetic impossibility? <laughs> Those are just base rumors spread by uh, heretics and stuff. No, no. Now Hargard is part of the Empire, at least 
part of it is. Alexius claims the entire world, but there's another uh, warlord there who does not agree. So we're going to be heading into some contested territories as we enter the new game. So what I really enjoyed about the Pax Alexius, when we did Fading Suns initially, we were coming out of the Cold War. There was the idea that it could be this period of growth that we could consolidate and uh, make friends between enemies. And we've seen how that's worked out, both in the yeah. real world and in the Fading Suns. But now in, the, uh, in 2020, it definitely feels like a different world than when we made the Fading Suns. What do you think are some of those key influences? One of the things I love best about Fading Suns is how it illuminates our current existence in a new way, sheds light on the current issues from a new set of eyes. Uh, well, yeah, it was always meant to do that, and uh, historical issues also, and bringing them back into the light of what's going on now. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's you certainly can. It, it certainly makes a lot of statements about uh, you know colonization, empire, and uh, freedom from such things. Because uh, one of the next things we hope to do is uh, to really expand on the Voldrock and their point of view from this whole thing. Having these known worlders come in and try to press their culture into theirs. And uh, we'll see how that winds up. It's going to be, you know, an interesting time for the known worlders. Uh, there's been a question if we're going to deal with an emperor em em empire-wide plague. And... Uh, <laughs> that you should uh, deal with less symbiotes at home. But it's interesting because we dealt with plague in the Merchant Prince game, and it's so interesting how true those lessons were now. So if any of those who played our computer games, Merchant Prince, you're essentially the Medici's meet Marco Polo. You traveled the world, traded, and you brought the plague back to Venice. And you could stop the plague immediately if you just quarantined the cities where the plague was. But you made so much money off the plague, no one would quarantine. <laughs> so it really was a lesson of watching people play Merchant Prince and how it incorporate with the plague. By the way, everyone, please do feel free to ask uh, more questions. Chainsaw Gothic says that he has fortified his home against husks just in case. Sir Alaris wants to know, how would the Stigmata Garrison handle this anyway? Uh, that would be complete lockdown, so, you know, we'd have full quarantines. We'd be safe for a while. <laughs> no symbiotes would get through into our houses. We would all shelter in monastery. <laughs> yep. Do Unfortunately, the uh, Stigmata Garrison commander is not in charge right now. And it uh, looks like uh, the symbiotes are going to sneak all over the place. No! Do feel free to comment in chat, talk in chat. We do have an Inquisitor in there if you get out of line. Just be aware of that. But, uh, yeah, definitely uh, we'll, we'll take uh, questions. For instance, Zen Seater. Oh, boy, I really wish I'd studied more German in my first uh, and second grade when I got it. Asked, how much of the author books in the Kickstarter are already finished as a Kickstarter? Say that we will get the first PDFs as soon as it is finished. Uh, they are already uh, written, done, and the art is in. They're in production now for getting layout. And uh, they Look will at definitely that book be cover. Done. Oh, you got one there? Let's see. Let's yeah, go. from way away. Ready. There uh, we go. That's on. a far let's, away, let's but there it is. Better. Let's find some better art that I was sent. That is the House Hawkwood Imperial oh, Dossier. This I like. Chapter 1 History with St. Horace the Learned uh, Man. Yep. Uh, no screenshotting this, so you can screenshot the book one page at a time. <laughs> I love some of these pictures. Some of the, who are some of the artists we have this time? It doesn't look like John Bridges, but a lot of folks who uh, have similar styles. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember the names here. Let me see if I can pull can up a little list. Can you even find that John Bridges guy anymore? Uh, I, I could look for him. I think I keep him down <laughs> in the basement these days. <laughs> Yeah. Hopefully he'll get some stuff done for Fading Suns eventually. Oh, 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 that's him. No, he just entered. What, what, what? Go back to Discord. Red Crow 88, there he is. Hey, Red Crow 88 is in the chat. And now I know the Dean Cider is a 10 sided die. Is how I say, well, I need a 10 sider in German. Oh, keep going but, through the pages. So you keep screenshotting them. Is that what you're trying to tell me? 
Yeah, but John didn't work on this edition because he's too busy working on the Smite esports game. He's gone from saints to gods. Is that a promotion or a demotion, Red Crow? <laughs> let's see. Okay, let's see some of the other art. Uh, some people on that one right now, the page you've got up there, let's go back. might recognize that person with the sword. Uh-oh, that looks like a Lee Halan outfit. Who could that be? Hmm, I wonder. I don't know any Lee Halans. Anybody out there know any Lee Halans? Hey, it's an Andrea <laughs> Ferris in chat. Yay! Best AI programmer we ever him. had at HDI. Yay! We need you doing AI again. Come back. Ulysses International. Yay! The artists from the spreadsheets are Catherine, Nico, Sebastian, uh, Wesley, hey, Zensider, I need you to help me with pronunciations. Larissa Katz, the character artist Benjamin Galetti. The character sheets were done by Stephen Brand, or Stefan Brand. You got me. Uh, Sir Alaris wants to know if that's Arianne Lee Halan, and who is she? That is Arianne Lee Halan. She is the lord of Giuseppe Lustro, who writes all the journals that appear on the main Fading Suns books, including the New Universe book. All right, well, I tell you what, I'm going to pull up another piece of artwork really quick, which is actually a cover for me to try and get one of our special guests in on this chat. So <laughs> hold on one second while I put up another piece of art. There we go. Why don't you talk about the name of this stream, Bill? Uh, this stream we're calling Heretical Musings. We were thinking about Barbarians at the Jump Gate, but I might actually use that title later on. So, we're getting all heretical here. Uh, yeah, someone asked to show a character sheet, and I believe we, you should have a shot of one of those. Andrew, can you find that? You let me know when you're ready. Do, 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 do. So, Bill, tell me about this marriage of, um... Uh, Alexius and the Voldrock shield main. What happened? Any kids yet? Why, indeed, there is a child. Princess there is Aurora. a princess. A princess Aurora. Princess Aurora. Oh my goodness! And does she uh, look like this? <laughs> oh my gosh! There she is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. It's I'm princess playing Aurora. Father, I'm father break. <laughs> Doing her dance. Hello, Princess Aurora. Thank you for the dance. Do you enjoy your dance? <laughs> yeah, watch out. She's already got uh, Psy 5 and Doppelganger 20. No, wait. <laughs> the urge is not there. Yeah, the urge isn't there Obviously, yet. Obviously, it's all faith. It's growing. Yay! <laughs> oh, and she loves birds. And actually, I think that is true for Aurora, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Princess Aurora, for joining us. Yay! Sorry, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that self-indulgent moment. Hope you didn't suffer too much through it. So, uh-oh, looks like there was some Inquisition action in the chat while I was away. Ah, uh, someone wants to see a character sheet example. Yep. So let's go ahead and pull up a character sheet example. Um, let's see here. Hello. You want to come over here and, whoops, that's the character book. There's the character sheet. That's the back. And here's the front of the character sheet. Come up here with me. There you go. <laughs> I'm oh, not seeing sorry. it yet. Sorry, I do need to transition back. Oh, OBS, how I love thee. There we <laughs> go. All right. So there's the character sheet itself. Bill, anything interesting in here that was not there before? The Surge stuff is kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know how well people are going to be able to see it, but uh, the Surge is which basically everybody's got a chance to get some victory points without having to make a roll. You don't have you have a limited number of these. You'll get more as you get better in your character, but uh, in an emergency, you can you can use a Surge. And right above that on the character sheet, we're talking at the very bottom there, you've got your victory point bank. Basically, uh, hold some victory points for you. Uh, I see, yeah, the revivals. Obviously, shields yep. have a threshold still. Yep, 
shields work pretty much the same. That's not going to be too new for folks. Uh, you have basically three resistances now. One is your body resistance, and uh, that's basically your armor. Your armor is going to add your body resistance. There are some perks you can take that will also add to it, like the stoic body perk. Uh, then there's your mind resistance. That's based mainly on rank, but again, there are a few perks that will add that too. Then there's your spirit resistance. That one's a little bit rarer. You have to practice what are called austerities, spiritual disciplines to get those, and those will protect you against uh, psychic and theurgic attacks. Sir Alaris wants and, to... And uh, someone asks about the skills listed there. Uh, oh, Alaris. And uh, yeah, those are, those are all the skills. We tried to really uh, streamline these down so people didn't have to get a gazillion of these... And so all those are all the skills, but uh, you'll see, I don't know if it's on this side of the sheet, it might be on page two, the, uh, you have capabilities now. And so instead of buying uh, like 10 different lore skills, what you'll get is like the academics skill, and you'll get certain capabilities that that will apply towards, such as uh, Severus lore or uh, Known Worlds lore. Can you all see the uh, back of the character sheet all right? I can see it now. You can zoom a little bit on it. Yeah, the top there is a space for perks and uh, capabilities. And uh, the birthrights is for aliens, mainly. That's where you list your cool stuff, like if you're a Vorox and you're giant. Or if you're an Atarian, you can fly. Sir Alaris wants an example of a filled-in character sheet, and I'll show you an old one filled in with my uh, my playtest character. If you will. <laughs> uh, if I can uh, find it in my mess of notes. Here we go. And that was oh, that's my Malik that I made up. I was looking for my Dikados. The heroine of the adventures, one who's going to save the universe. Lady Tirza Lagari Gagorin. Yeah, there you go, my great handwriting. <laughs> that's an old, old uh, version of the book. Yeah, that's an old one when we're slamming that stuff together. It's not as nice looking as uh, Stephen's no, much slicker uh, sheet here. It has to be Dakados. We know all Dakados are the real heroes. <laughs> 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 Even the uh, princess tells you that. So, all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I definitely would like to revisit a lot of that Dark Between the Star stuff. So that's one of the questions here, asking if we're going to revisit those. And yeah, that's a definite yes if we can keep these things going. Which means back in pledge today. Let's Princess see, we get a... We only... Ah, someone's asking about the aliens. Um, in the new edition, in the core books, you'll have access to the Urobun, Urukar, and Vorox, just like in the previous editions. But then the faction book will give you all the other aliens. Yeah, I notice I don't have any art of the um, aliens, but I do have art of some notable figures, such as... Bill, when this comes up, who would this be? Somebody's asked us how old he is now. Oh, and well, that's never the man an emperor himself. Is I know, that's so rude. <laughs> You're abs actually right, but don't tell them that. That's one of the secrets yes. of the universe. Alright. That that's how old he is. <laughs> Check him out with a beard. No wonder Theophana left him. That's pretty old. That's pretty the old. The has gifted him with long life. Certainly not longevity serums. It's the pan creator. <laughs> And uh, let's see, who would this be coming up now? So oh, he's older, he's more grizzled, he's an eschatonic. That's who might that be? Oh, you blew it. Sorry, the princess wanted to know. Yep. How old is he? <laughs> that is our 20 year older lust. Yeah, I guess he's in his 40s now. Hope he got some more rank. Yeah, that's old. <laughs> Yeah. All right. We have the Archbishop here. She looks pretty new, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Archbishop Languitot. She is the Senecula. It was hard to draw his limp. Oh, no. That, uh... 
That is uh, Archbishop uh, Eloise. Is that how you pronounce it? Eloise. Eloise. Languedoc. She is the new Snacula. And uh, here's someone who's been looking for uh, Sir Laris. Oh, I tell you, I'll get it working in a second. Here's someone who's been looking for Sir Laris. And others. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, the Inquisition is still in full effect. There have definitely been attempts to throttle it back with no luck. <laughs> and a rough customer. Saint Horus himself, as we showed before. I love a lot of the art that y'all are putting together for this. This is probably, I think, everyone's favorite right now. Yeah, I'm quite impressed by these. They're great. Uh, Mike Schmidt is the art director. He's doing a great job. With all this. The monkey one is pretty silly. The monkey. <laughs> That's a Ganok. That's a Ganok. <laughs> That's one of your subjects. Indeed. Here, let's get a bit of bigger picture of the monkey going here. That's I guess the only that and the Vorox are really the only two we have uh, right here right now. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, if, if you look on the uh, Kickstarter pledge page, as you go down some, you'll see uh, old Saint Lextius. I should have had that screen uh, up nope. already. No seal and his katana. He's kind of a hot, sexy dude. <laughs> well, let's try and get a Gannick in on the caller. Uh, the second best thing to a, a Gannick. Let's see here. Can we do it without losing Bill completely? <laughs> let's try it. No, I don't know. Trying to add someone to the call is interesting. Trying to add someone to the call. Nope, he is no longer online. Oh, well. Oh, well. We actually had a Kurgan who wanted to call in. So what's going on with the Kurgan Caliphate? Oh, the poor Kurgan Caliphate. Uh, somebody, who the hell knows who, shut down the gate between Hera and the rest of the Kurgan Caliphate. So all those Kurgans who are on that world are kind of stuck there now, and now the Hazat is claiming it for themselves. And that... What do we got here? Sorry about that. We had a caller and I thought I could sneak it in. Keep talking. All right. Well, uh, so no one's exactly sure what's going on in the Kurga Caliphate right now because to find out anything, you have to travel all through Voldrox space to get over there. So uh, it's a bit of a mystery. We'll find out soon enough. Well, but for now, we actually have a surprise guest who travels through the world, and it well, well. is Harry Heckle, Dread Pirate Jack Heckle. <laughs> How are you, Bill? Hey, Harry, it's been a long time. Awesome. It has been a long time. Yes, we're trying to get so. surprises on, even for the patriarch himself. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So. Anyway, couldn't miss it. Come on, fading sons. How how cool is this? And Andrew might have conspired a little bit with me earlier today. <laughs> oh, there we go. Good, good, good for him. Anyway, so great stuff. Brilliant artwork. It just looks fantastic. And I still love the D20. Reminds me of a Arthurian game I played a long time ago. Hmm. Trying to get the highest number. What so, uh, would that be? <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 cool, cool. So for those who don't know, Harry Heckel, excellent writer. It's great to have him even back in the uh, White Wolf days. All kinds of good stuff. And he's getting to hear a bird go tweet, tweet, tweet at him. I uh, hear tweet, 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 tweet. And I think that's fantastic. <laughs> so, very that's a cool. teary. I don't speak a teary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Dread Pirate Jack Heckel. By the way, Bill, I've already got approval from Harry that I can have a character based on him, the Dread Pirate Jack Heckel. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, right. but I'm not the first Dread Pirate Jack Heckle. You know, there's a whole line of them. Oh, there we go. It's a thing. Huh? Uh, awesome. Very and that cool. was the Pirate's Parrot. You're exactly correct. Going to <laughs> There you go. So, good times going back to Umbra the Velvet Shadow and DC by Night and all sorts of exciting yeah, stuff. Yeah, my God. It's the old, old days. Jeez. Old, old days. Yeah, so, right. great. Thanks for joining us, Harry. All right, thanks. Take care, everybody. Cool, nice seeing you. All right, while we transition here, 
Yeah, so tell us about some of the writers you've got working on it now, Bill. Well, we've got some of the classics coming back, such as Brian Campbell there, Chainsaw Gothic. We've got Sam and Abinett. Uh, we've got, uh, geez, all sorts of great people. Some new people, too. Jacqueline Brick did some good stuff with the Nobles. Uh, James Malchewski did some great stuff with the church and the priests. I got Ian Lemke, who uh, is currently doing The Expanse now for uh, another company. But uh, he did some stuff here for Fang Sons, too. And uh, I've got uh, Jennifer Hartshorn did some editing. Brian Campbell did some editing. Uh, boy, just tons of folks. we got Rustin Quaid back also. He's uh, doing some stuff for the Voldrock now, so we'll hear more about them. Christopher Howard, he... Uh, did the Hawkwood uh, <laughs> Imperial dossier? Yes, those Hawkwoods. And uh, uh, let's see, uh, got some uh, new folks. William Thrasher did uh, the Reeves Guild book. That's a really good one. Along with somebody named Andrew who wrote some stuff about yeah. Firebirds and so on. Don't trust him. Right, exactly. Kept trying to slip you a weird coin. <laughs> So yeah, we got all sorts of great folks on this time around. Wait, keep talking. And, I'm going to uh, find my cursed coins. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's uh, it's return of a lot of the old old timers and some new folks too. It's all Back good before stuff. Alexi has got his beard. What? Oh yeah, that's one of the. Uh, Here, let me make I can't it. see it too well. It's a lot of focus there. Hold on get this going. All right. Just to annoy everybody. <laughs> wow. Someone asked from the German Ulysses crowd, not for the writing. We do have a German writer, Sascha Schnitzer, who wrote some stuff. He's continuing to write some stuff, too. Oh, here we go again. The War in the Heavens 3 question. <laughs> Inevitable. I have no idea uh, who's going to ask that. I would love to do War in the Heavens 3. It is fully my intention to do it, but we have to set up some things first. Uh, we have to first reintroduce the Voldrock and get some of uh, their things down because it turns out Hargard is going to be an important place in the War in the Heavens. And uh, we have to also revisit some of the psychic power stuff. So once we get those out of the way, the path will be paved for War in the Heavens Pantheon. But uh, you guys will have to back all this stuff so we can get it. This is something Bill and I have been planning for a long time, for those of you on the stream who aren't aware of it. We did the first two books of the War in the Heavens. Those were primarily Bill's work. They're incredible. Some of my favorite gaming books, The Vow, The Symbiotes. Just amazing stuff. And Bill and I had big plans for where that would all be. And we hate that it took 20 more years to get to this stage with it. But... Uh, yeah, we had a bunch of things that were going to blow up big. One yep. of the things that we have introduced now are more of those Lost Worlds coming back in. We're going to be seeing many more references to Lost Worlds and the like, and that was going to be a big part of the, the jump web basically being reconnected. Uh, what Someone asked about the uh, character creation details for Minor... Uh, it's Alaris again. I keep seeing that. That's a different name for some reason. Hi, Sir Allers. Um, Lauren. Uh, Minor Noble Houses are in the Faction book. Uh, along with the Minor Guilds and the Minor Sects and the Pagans and the Aliens. Now, uh, I was going to show... How are we doing on time? So I'm going to ask about Lustro. Lustro has a brand new journal in the Universe book. And uh, things go correctly, he will have a new journal in the main book of all the future Kickstarters. So we will continue with his adventures. You going to compile more of them? As we get more. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yay! All right. Uh, we also did a game called Noble Armada Lost Worlds recently, a computer game which introduced a number of Lost Worlds. These are not canonical. So we'll for those of you who have been playing Noble Armada Lost Worlds, don't accept what is in there as Fading Sun's canon. Everything in there is an attempt for you to go ahead and try out new things. Let me explore different paths with that. If you all can um, 
Give me a moment. I'll be glad to pull up some Noble Armada to show you all. And Bill and I will keep talking through that. So, one second for me to get it working. All and Bill, right. you can still be talking. Cause they can still sure, be absolutely. Talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> Noble Armada Lost Worlds. Yep. Uh, what do we got here? We got Kickstarter Persuade to a full chronicle. Uh, boy, that'll, that might take a while. Let's see. Uh, what about the live action? Uh, we'll well, yep. it, if everybody wants it, absolutely. Uh, I'll have to hear more about it, see if uh, anybody wants that sort of thing, but uh, we'll figure a way to do it. Uh, God Style Series come. It's all a God Style Series. We influence sure that. It's Game of Thrones. Yeah, you know who, obviously. You know who Martin's favorite GM is. <laughs> Am yeah, I wrong? Right. <laughs> Lie? Now, Game of Thrones, the first book, did come out the same year as Fading Suns did back in '96. All right. Somebody was copying somebody. So I'm pulling up a little bit of the Noble Armada Lost yeah. World game. So. Let me. I'm. You should be able to hear audio from it as well. If not, I'm getting yeah. something else wrong. So one of the fun things yeah. we had in here was being able to set up a lot of uh, missions for people to enjoy. Uh, so every house, there are a number of missions that were universal, but each house had its own special ones as well. Uh, we've got some Yo, of the creators of these missions in the stream. Belaya's Retreat with Pirates. Yeah, the Pirate Belaya was my favorite. I think that has to be uh, Dread Pirate Captain Jack Heckle's mentor. Dark World Empress Challenge, Fight of the Concord, Glimmers of Empire. We had a lot of fun with a bunch of these. Ivor, if everyone remembers that Lost World. Kabbalah. Yeah, well, Ivor's not lost anymore. It's been found for 20 years. But it's still causing some tensions and troubles because you got so many heretics on that world. Curses, curses. One of my favorite things about Noble Armada was that we also provided you an editor to make all your own missions. Really easy to use. You get a jump gate automatically. You would go ahead and uh, go into the system. You could trans uh, go through a whole bunch of different planet types, put planets in, connect them with jump routes, and then put missions in for all sorts of nastiness. And I love how much these influence uh, my own games. So add spaceships, add factions. Everyone's favorite faction. Different armadas. What sort of snare it happened. All the text. And then Someone asked these. about uh, if we're going to get any books that cover Manitou and AppShine. Really, uh, you know, eventually, hopefully, we'll be able to, you know, reintroduce everything. Uh, the Vow are not the most immediate concern being that the Voltrock are, are taking up more of the uh, headspace of everybody but uh, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> Whatever happened to Andrew's Chowky? <laughs> <laughs> where's my uh, where's my airlock to fire him out of? Yeah, well who knows. <laughs> Don't let the Hazad hear you asking about that. So with uh, Noble Armada, we're actually about to release uh, the console versions of that game. So be ready for uh, that to happen in the not-too-distant future. Hey, we've got 225 backers now. All right, so we've got 30 people on the stream. I think that's the highest we've had so far. Good deal. They all came in when I uh, put it back on Bill. Maybe we should get the princess <laughs> dancing again. Um, yeah, there we go. So... <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about plans and schedule. Mm -hmm. So Kickstarter, you all did a really accelerate. I say you all because it's not HDI doing the Kickstarter or the production or getting the money. It's all going to Ulysses Spiel, who's the publisher, and yes, HDI will get royalties, but this is in U.S.'s hands uh, to make work. And they brought in somebody who knows a little bit about the, the line to run it, the patriarch himself. But uh, what is the schedule now? Well, schedule now is uh, once we finish with this one, we'll have another one within the next, uh, you know, hopefully five, six months, and uh, you'll get more stuff. 
and uh, we'll keep rolling from there. Like I said, uh, the next uh, we're hoping to look at you know, expand on the barbarians and spaceships and travel to other places and psychic powers, and then eventually the strange mysteries revealed in uh, War in the Heavens Pantheon. And that opens up a whole new can of worms, which I'm not going to talk about right yet. A can of worms or a can of tentacles? It's the Nizdarim, so what the heck now? <laughs> the Nizdarim are already around. They're on Hargard and elsewhere. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So yeah, uh, we want to keep this ball rolling. We want to keep introducing all sorts of new things. We'll get more imperial dossiers, so people will be able to get a look at those. Uh, in case you know people aren't fully aware, the dossiers aren't just the factions. They also include lots of information, background on the universe that are relevant to everybody, such as the House Hawkwood dossier includes uh, stuff about the nobility itself on how ranks are done, how fiefs are owned and managed. The Reeves one has stuff on money and the law. And the Earth Orthodox uh, Imperial Dossier covers uh, scripture and theology, really, which is uh, the stuff that pertains to all the sects, largely in the church. So uh, those Imperial Dossiers are going to be of good use to everybody, even somebody who's not playing Hawkwood or Reeves or whatever. The Dicado Yeah, it should, if the person who's writing it ever gets it done. So, changing the subject, <laughs> will there be further information details for the individual nightly orders? Uh, that'd, that'd be great. I'd love to revisit the nightly orders. That's certainly something that uh, could certainly get its own book someday. There's a lot of them out there. Consideration uh, back gathering those dossiers. Uh, you know that'd be cool if we get it, if we can you know sell enough of them eventually. That'd be great. Uh, be cool. box. I haven't seen the Torg box. The Torg Kickstarter is amazing. I love what Craig Gordon's doing with the Torg line. But what's this uh, Torg-like box? That actually sounds kind of scary. Oh yeah, the Kickstarter's on Torg. You have these big giant boxes full of all sorts of stuff. They're just massive. They're very cool. Yeah, those are neat. Uh, you know, maybe we'll do one of those for the next Kickstarter. Who knows? If we have enough stuff, we'll see. Yeah, Greg Gordon did some great work back in the day. I love seeing him on that line. Yeah, and Daryl Hayhurst has been doing some great stuff with it, too. Excellent, excellent. Can we see a modern-day Cardanzo? You know, I don't remember if we have a picture of Cardanzo or Ong in this new one. I think Julia might be in there. In fact, I'm pretty sure Cardanzo is somewhere. I haven't seen those Zillows yet. I'll have to look for those. Uh, Phantom of Truth says that the number of uh, viewers we have is the highest we've seen on this channel. And it's a good channel of uh, viewers on the German language channel. So. Oh, good deal. See, uh, How many do we have? We've uh, hit we 30. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. I forgot to host it on my own channel. Goodness gracious, had that all going. <laughs> Then we have all the audio issues. That didn't happen. Uh, well, next time. All right. All right. Uh, so, uh, you know, we had some fun play tests here uh, in Atlanta, but I'm enjoying seeing people run the game on streams. What do you think of the uh, online games that have been happening? Uh, a lot of fun. You've got the one going on right now with uh, the intrepid crew, the Oi Boy. <laughs> they have a lot of brother battles and stuff there. Uh, that one you can find the links on actually it runs on this channel here and we're gonna have some more coming up soon certain people who are on this uh, chat right now will be running some or at least be involved in them we'll send some links around more and we know more but so there'll be a lot of stuff to uh, to uh, to watch on fading Sun soon yeah looking forward to people getting to see the game played even before they start. It was always fun running demos at conventions. And I love the idea of doing online demos now, especially when people get the books in their hands. So they can all go right. at once. So would folks uh, see those? see New Fading Sun show. The Annals from Antioch. When the noble ship is thrown into a lost jump route, the crew finds himself crashed on the lost world of Antioch. Good lord. 
Oh, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, don't be afraid wow, to that's crazy. In public, uh, some folks don't get to see the chat, so never uh, okay. to read chat. All right, well, these guys are caught between two barbarian factions and a rogue religious sect ruled by a seemingly immortal paladin Drax. The Imperials must find a way to survive and make it back to the Pax Alexia. So, well, good luck to them. Yeah, in case of nice. love, Kane loves seeing demo games at local shops. In fact, I had two local shops where I was lined up to run demos during the Kickstarter, and for some reason that's not happening now. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why that could be. So, Tony, oh, boy. When you reopen, glad to run them in there again. In fact, we had a big convention last week that got canceled where I'd hope to be doing it. Speaking of what happened yeah. to the game? Oh, that'll have to be rescheduled. We were going to have a Dragon Con game, but anybody who tuned in early to the Kickstarter might have seen that. But uh, unfortunately, with this current situation, can't really fully guarantee it. Uh, we'll see about doing that soon or something else instead. Very cool, very cool. Oh, uh, quick comment to Noble Armada. I realize we're going to have a new PC version up after the console version comes out. So keep an eye out for that. Those of you who already bought it will get a whole new version with whole new missions and all kinds of cool things. Uh, all right. So uh, we talked a little bit about the background of Fading Suns coming out at the end of the Cold War period, and now we have it in an age of uh, nationalism, so to say. Um, a great deal of balkanization of planets, rise of nationalism. Uh, feelings like that. Um, it's always been interesting having the real world feed and influence the gaming. One thing I've uh, been hearing throughout this pandemic, right, is so much art being created right now. But everyone is saying that now pandemics and zombies are completely used up the top. They've been completely explored. <laughs> what do you think, Bill? Are there still ways to explore old topics in new ways? Oh, there's always ways to pull that off. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see about the pandemic thing, but uh, for right now, you know, hey, Fading Sun's always going to have husks and husk plagues. So, you know, we were doing that before Walking Dead. And where do they film that, anyway? Uh, one of the things <laughs> that I do love about a science fantasy setting like this is it does put things in a very different light. That was one of the great things about exploring power dynamics. We'd ex I, I'd explored power dynamics in gaming before. Obviously with Vampire, that was a very central theme and really blew it up more in Fading Suns. But you can take these modern issues. What does it mean to be a despot? What does democracy mean to people? What does it mean to be the strong leader, the weak leader? Where does leadership really come from? And explore it in these new ways and see it in all new lights. And it makes me look at these topics that I've been studying since I was a reporter on, in Capitol Hill, on Capitol Hill in D.C., in all new ways. And I think the same is still true of pandemics, um, zombie mentalities, uh, our desire to change shapes and so forth, change who we are, uh, can definitely play out in all new ways. Uh, any yeah. games you're really looking forward to exploring, Bill? Uh, everything. <laughs> uh, I will say, interestingly, on the pandemic thing, uh, the final chapter of the Intrigues and Escapades book has a lot of drama hooks. Just little short, you know, uh, ideas you can run for your games. And I, they had titles, and I put them all in alphabetical order, and I didn't think about it. But when I got it back from the editor the other day, Jennifer Hartshorn, she pointed out the very last one is about a pandemic on a world. It's like, oh, interesting how that happens. All right, well, tell us what some of the others are. Leak the information. No, no, no. That one must be quiet because I don't remember them all now. God, it's all melange in my head. But the Intrigues and Escapade books ha has uh, other, some fully fleshed out dramas. To, to bring you through the whole thing and then a host of drama hooks so you can just pick up and uh, fill in all the details on your own it also has lots of advice on uh, how nobles are raised at every step of their lives from birth to marriage to death to uh, be involved in intrigue and scheming and another chapter on the church scheming and the merchant schemes yes love drama hooks lots of hooks 
And so, yeah, one of the nice things about the new edition, especially with Ulysses, we uh, get to do a lot more uh, dramas and adventures. Those used to be kind of hard to do because it used to be only the GMs bought them. But uh, now, you know, it's a lot easier to do this kind of stuff with the current environment and gaming. Uh, so we're going to be able to have a, do a lot more support for adventures and epics and dramas and campaigns, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it was just hard to justify the financials of doing a book that only the GMs bought. Yeah, right. we had a lot of GMs, but we've got five times more players. So. But so them. now, yeah, we got intrigues and in escapades, plus uh, some other you know interesting stuff in the stretch goals. And then uh, with each uh, wave, we'll be doing a lot more adventure books. All right, we have five more minutes for this stream before we get booted off the airwaves. Uh, would people like to see more of these live streams? And if so, are there any topics you would like us to cover? Obviously, we all expect Bill to run demos of the games, and we'll have everyone in chat make up characters and play them in the game. Right, Bill? <laughs> Once they get their PDFs. Oh, okay. Uh, apparently, there's some interest in more of these. Um, are there any adventures? Yeah, we can delve more into the history, too, of specific things, like uh, who came up with what, so on, that kind of thing. Yeah, because be we had some great co I mean, Bill and I call ourselves co-creators because while we did the tabletop, uh, we also had Ken Leitner, Ed Pike, and others early on in the day who really were such driving forces behind Emperor of the Fading Suns and more. So, um... And a lot of the writers, too. A lot of the... Yeah, we were very happy to have the creative fervor and all the talented people who came in. It was never one person's creation. It was what I love the best the result of a good team in action in place, making good things. Uh, how many yep. of you in chat played Emperor of the Fading Suns? Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Bye, Basluk. Get that back to work. Classic. Get back to your office and call some <laughs> people. Uh, yeah, some folks have, some folks haven't. Yeah, uh, Emperor of the Fading Suns, we did with Sega Soft. Yes, we did it with Sega's PC branch for the year that it was alive. Uh, we've had a few publishers who died on us over in the day. Um, but yeah, we would love to do that again at some point. Lots of fun things in there. Uh, the intro that we showed at the beginning of this stream was the intro from the Emperor of the Fading Suns computer game. I really still find it amazing how well those graphics have stood up now 25 years after they were created. I mean, they're not exactly um, uh, Pixar, but they are good and fun. Anyone here from the Fading uh, Suns mush back in the day? Uh, oh, man, I'd love to see another Fading Suns mush kick. Gosh, I, I don't guess so. Those gang, that gang was pretty pretty involved in it. Yeah, that was a great group. Even Brian, even Chainsaw Gothic says he hasn't been in a mud or a mush in a long time. All right, sounds like there's interest in us doing another one of these. Maybe we'll try and trick Ulysses International into letting us hijack their uh, stream uh, again a week from today. Bill, what do you think? That's fine with me. Same time, same place. And how can they reach you, Bill, to send comments if they want to see anything special? Where should they reach Twitter me? Best? Should they tweet you have at to. you? Should they go to the Fading Suns Facebook page? Why don't we say the Fading Suns Facebook page? Because I think I can get that link up in chat quickly. Yeah, that'd be the best one. And of course, you can comment in the Kickstarter if you're a backer. <laughs> I can't even comment. I'm back yet. I need to get my credit card out. Gotta back it. Gotta back Got 226 it. backers right now. Let's wow. keep her going. What, have you guys announced another stretch goal yet? I don't know the stretch goals, people. I'm relying on them to find out what they are. All right. Ulysses put up some links there for you, folks. There's the Kickstarter link. There's the Fading Suns Facebook link. All right. Thank you, Ulysses. Hey, we didn't have to ban anybody in chat today. What's wrong with all you viewers? <laughs> I mean, good job, everybody. Uh, we'll get crazier next time. Good stuff. Thank you all. Everybody. And yeah, I hope to bring in some guest stars next time, too. Some of the other writers and stuff. Get all sorts of people who were involved in Fading Suns over the years in there. Ah, join the old boy. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. I have to try that. And for those who tuned in late, we're going to leave out with the intro from Emperor of the Fading Suns again. So if you missed it before, you get to see it now. Take care, everybody. Bye, guys.
For half a millennium, humanity has lived among the stars in darkness. Humans reached the stars long ago, building a republic of high technology and universal emancipation. Then they fought over it, squandered it, and finally lost it. Now a new dark age has descended upon humanity, for the greatest of civilizations has fallen, leaving ignorance and fear scattered among the ruins of many worlds. Even the stars are dying. Then from the ashes of our ruin, Vladimir halted our decline. Proclaimed emperor by popular decree, he united the known worlds of human space under his cunning and charismatic rule. Vladimir created the Great Charter, declaring how the powers of rulership would be divided and how his successors would be elected. Five scepters for Mother Church, protector of our souls. Five for the Merchant League, heralds of our past. Five for the noble houses, holders of our future. But each of these powers wished to rule it in their own way, and schemed to gain complete power at any price. Vladimir's military might convinced the noble houses to concede his rule, for they could not stand in battle before this master tactician. The Merchant League, last remnants of the Second Republic, made little pretense of their disdain for the Charter of Vladimir, but they accepted his rule nonetheless. Fearful of his popularity among the people, the Patriarch of the Universal Church accepted Vladimir's rule on the condition that the Church present him the crown, thus ensuring their ritual role in approving all his successors. Vladimir's coronation as the first emperor of the known worlds took place on Byzantium Secundus, which had been declared the imperial throne world. In the year 4550 AD, Vladimir crowned himself with his own hands and died. Vladimir's death, his great union fell apart. Noble House turned on Noble House, igniting a war for the spoils of Vladimir's empire. The Commonwealth of Humanity was shattered, overcome by iron-fisted feudal lords. As the suns fade, so dies humanity's hope.